Well, good morning, and uh, thank you all for being here today. I'm here to provide more detail on what the Prime Minister announced this morning. I want to begin by acknowledging the diligence of frontline health care workers who are treating patients and the public health care providers who are working tirelessly to slow the spread of this disease, this virus. They've worked extremely hard in recent times to prepare our country as we pull together. Last week, we announced funding to make sure our provinces and our territories have everything necessary in order to protect Canadians and make sure that the federal government was doing everything that it could. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the countless others who are helping us to get through a very challenging time. Across the country, cleaners and janitors are keeping spaces clean and disinfected. At grocery stores and at pharmacies, people are working hard to restock shelves and manage difficult situations. IT and telecom workers are making sure that our networks are functioning well as more and more Canadians work from home. Truckers, rail workers, air cargo workers, and postal workers are working to make sure that we have the essential goods that we need. At food banks and at shelters, workers are facing growing uncertainty with dedication and with a sense of duty. There are countless others who, in these difficult times, have showed immense patience and determination in making sure that Canadians have the goods and services that they need. So I want to thank all of you for all that you're doing. The health and safety of Canadians is our government's top priority. We continue to urge Canadians to stay home and to follow the advice from medical professionals and from public health officials. Please take all necessary precautions to protect your health. It's not just about you. It's about your neighbours. It's about your colleagues. It's about your family members. La santé et la sécurité des Canadiens et des Canadiennes sont la priorité absolue de notre gouvernement. Nous continuons d'insister pour que tous les Canadiens qui peuvent rester à la maison le fassent et pour que tous suivent les conseils des professionnels de la santé et des responsables de la santé publique. S'il vous plaît, prenez toutes les précautions nécessaires pour protéger votre santé. Il ne s'agit pas seulement de vous, il s'agit de vos voisins, de vos collègues, des membres de votre famille. We all have a role to play to flatten the curve and to protect those who are most vulnerable. We have to look out for each other. That's what Canadians do. We need that Canadian spirit now, more than ever. COVID-19 is having a significant impact on our economy, an impact that continues to evolve. At this stage, the full breadth and the scope of the impact remain unknown. I want to acknowledge the Prime Minister's leadership. This is a challenge like none that we've ever faced before. Facing up to it demands swift and decisive action. A coordinated approach is absolutely necessary at this time. I'm in contact with provincial and territorial partners with the private sector and with my colleagues, other finance ministers from around the world. I've also been working very closely with federal colleagues, including Governor Polos from the Bank of Canada, who's here with me today. Together, we're working hard to mitigate the impacts of COVID-19 on the Canadian and on the global economy. Clearly, the impacts of this pandemic have been profound and will continue to be profound. Households and businesses are already feeling the effects. Our government is prepared to do whatever it takes to keep our economy strong and stable, whatever it takes. I want to address something off the top. Usually my job is to ensure that we maintain our fiscal track. But right now, as Minister of Finance, my only job is to make sure that Canadians can keep food in the fridge, that they can keep a roof over their heads, that they can afford the medicine that they need. As you've heard me say many times before, we've entered this challenge in a very strong fiscal position. Canada's balance sheet is the envy of the world, and it means we have the fiscal firepower to respond. We're now prepared to use it. COVID-19 is an extraordinary challenge 
that requires an extraordinary investment. Today, we're announcing the first phase, the first phase of Canada's COVID-19 economic response plan. We'll provide $27 billion of direct support to people and businesses, which is more than 1% of our GDP. On top of this, we'll defer $55 billion in tax revenue, leaving that money in the economy. For The Economist listening, that's 3% of GDP that would not be in the economy without these actions. For all Canadians, this means we're doing whatever it takes to support you and your family as we contain this virus. Aujourd'hui, nous annonçons la première phase de notre plan d'intervention économique du Canada pour répondre à la COVID-19. Nous fournirons 27 milliards de dollars de soutien direct aux individus et aux entreprises, ce qui représente plus de 1% du PIB. De plus, nous reporterons 55 milliards de dollars de recettes fiscales, laissant cet argent dans l'économie. Pour les économistes à l'écoute, cela représente 3% de PIB qui ne serait pas dans l'économie dans ses actions. Pour les Canadiens, cela signifie que nous faisons tout ce qu'il faut pour vous soutenir alors que nous contenons le virus. We're working quickly to get money into people's hands so that no matter what happens during this period, they can afford the essentials. And we're working to make sure that no one gets left behind. First and foremost, we know that people are worried about their health. So if you're needing to quarantine or to self-isolate or care for a loved one who's sick, you can get around $450 per week, even if you don't qualify for employment insurance. The new, what we're calling emergency care benefit will provide self-employed Canadians contractors, freelancers, part-time workers, gig economy workers, many of our cultural workers and more, with income security if they can't work because they're in self-isolation or in quarantine or taking care of a loved one. This benefit will provide income support of $900 every two weeks for up to 15 weeks. La nouvelle allocation de soins d'urgence offrira aux travailleurs autonomes canadiens, aux entrepreneurs, aux pigistes, aux travailleurs à temps partiel, a bon nombre de nos travailleurs culturels, et plus encore, une sécurité de revenus s'ils ne peuvent pas travailler parce qu'ils sont en l'isolement ou en quarantaine, ou parce qu'ils prennent soin d'un proche. Cette allocation fournira un soutien de revenus de 900 dollars toutes les deux semaines et jusqu'à 15 semaines. For working parents who are unable to work because schools and daycares are closed, or if you need to take care of a sick family member, you'll also qualify for the emergency care benefit. Canadians can apply online, at home, allowing them to follow public health guidelines, and they can receive payment via direct deposit. It will require a simple attestation that will not require medical documentation. We want this to be as easy as possible so that people who need this help can get this help. The benefit will be available starting in early April. This is about saving lives. No Canadian will have to worry about protecting their health and putting food on the table. This new measure builds on the announcement the Prime Minister made last week that we're waiving the one-week waiting period to access the employment insurance sickness benefits for people who are sick or in quarantine. We also know that people are worried about struggling to pay the bills if they lose their jobs or see their hours reduced. We want you to know <clears throat> that we have your back. For any worker who loses their job and does not qualify for employment insurance, we'll be introducing a new benefit, the Emergency Support Benefit, for which we've set aside $5 billion. More details will come in the near future, but you can rest assured that the federal government will provide you with 14 weeks of support at a comparable level to the employment insurance program. There are also over 12 million Canadian families with low and modest incomes who will need extra financial support at this time. The government will provide a GST credit averaging close to $400 for single adults and $600 for couples to see you through. And to help families keep their kids well-fed and provided for, the government will issue a special Canada Child Benefit, top-up, of $300 per child. For a single parent with two children, 
earning minimum wage, these two measures combined will mean around $1,500 of special support. Pour tout travailleur qui perd son emploi et qui n'est pas admissible à leur science d'emploi, nous allons introduire une nouvelle allocation, l'allocation de soutien d'urgence, pour laquelle nous avons réservé 5 milliards de dollars. Plus de détails viendront dans un avenir rapproché, mais vous pouvez être assuré que le gouvernement fédéral vous donnera, vous donnera 14 semaines de soutien à un niveau comparable à l'assurance d'emploi. Plus de 12 millions de familles canadiennes à revenus faibles et modestes auront besoin d'un soutien financier supplémentaire. Le gouvernement accordera un crédit pour le TPS d'une moyenne près de 400 dollars pour les adultes seuls, près de 600 dollars pour les couples. Et pour aider les familles à s'occuper de leurs enfants et de bien les nourrir, le gouvernement émettra un supplément spécial de l'allocation canadienne pour enfants de 300 dollars par enfant. Pour une parent seule avec deux enfants qui gagnent le salaire minimum, ces deux mesures combinées représenteront environ 1 500 dollars de soutien. We know seniors are worried too. First and foremost, please take care of your health. Practice social distancing and make sure you're listening to medical advice. We also know you're concerned about the impact of recent market volatility on your retirement funds. We will help you protect the value of your retirement fund by temporarily reducing the minimum withdrawal on registered retirement income funds by 25%. We'll continue to monitor this issue as markets evolve. And I want to assure you that your OAS and GIS payments will continue as usual, without any interruption. Many young Canadians who are starting out in their careers are worried about what this uncertainty will mean to their finances. We're putting in place a six-month interest-free moratorium on student, Canada student loan paybacks. This means nearly a million Canadians will have an extra $160 a month during this period. We know that Indigenous communities face a greater risk of financial insecurity, so we're creating a distinctions-based Indigenous community support fund. It's crucial that we support our most vulnerable at this time. And that, of course, has to include shelters. Shelters across the country will need the tools to prevent outbreaks. So we'll invest over $200 million to support the homeless through homeless shelters, sexual assault centers, and shelters for women and children to help with the purchase of necessary equipment to implement the best medical advice for keeping people safe and healthy. Partout au pays, les refuges auront besoin d'outils pour prévenir les épidémies. Nous investirons donc près de 200 millions de dollars pour soutenir les refuges pour sans-abri les centres pour victimes d'agressions sexuelles et les maisons pour femmes et enfants afin de les aider à acheter l'équipement nécessaire pour mettre en œuvre les meilleurs conseils médicaux pour assurer la sécurité et la santé des gens. At the heart of this, we need businesses to keep going so that they can keep employees on staff. I know many small and medium-sized businesses and organizations are very concerned about their ability to keep paying their workers. For small employers, we will provide a 10% wage subsidy for the next three months, up to $25,000 per employer. This is effective immediately and will help keep Canadians employed. Je sais que de nombreuses petites et moyennes entreprises et organisations sont très préoccupées par leur capacité de continuer à rémunérer leurs employés. Pour les petites entreprises et organisations, nous fournirons une subvention salariale de 10 pour les trois prochains mois, jusqu'à un montant de 25 000 Cela entre en vigueur immédiatement et aidera à garder les Canadiens au travail. This builds on steps taken last week to enhance the work sharing program, which will help workers facing reduced hours to get by and help businesses and employers in these difficult times. We also announced Business Credit Availability Program, which will provide $10 billion in credit support through the Business Development Bank of Canada and Export Development Canada 
to help businesses and organizations get the financing that they need to keep operating and to keep their employees on. We're prepared to provide additional financial support as necessary. On Friday, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions took action to free up $300 billion in lending capacity. The Bank of Canada, the Governor of the Bank of Canada, also announced a rate cut of 50 basis points to stabilize our economy. We know that businesses in some sectors are more affected than others, like air transportation and the oil and gas sector, and we know that they will need specific help. EDC and BDC are currently developing a tailored set of tools for them and for other affected sectors. At the same time, the federal government will begin working with the government of Alberta on support for workers in the oil and gas sector. We'll make a significant investment in orphan well remediation to help both companies and workers in the province. And we'll be ready to make an announcement on this in the coming days. Canadians are also worried, of course, about bills that are coming due. On Monday, the Canada Mortgage Housing Corporation reinstated the Insured Mortgage Protection Program. Through this program, the corporation will offer $50 billion so that banks and mortgage lenders can offer Canadians payment deferrals, special payment arrangements, or other options to assist homeowners through this time. Compounded with other liquidity tools that we've mentioned, this will mean that there's now $500 billion in credit available to Canadian businesses and households. I've also been talking to the heads of Canada's largest banks, and they've committed to me that they will work with individuals and with businesses on a case-by-case -case basis to provide additional flexibility in the face of hardships. As a first step, this support will include up to a six-month deferral program for mortgages and specific opportunities for relief on other credit products, like skip a payment on auto loans or on credit cards. Our banks have a, a long history of standing by Canadians through challenging times. I encourage Canadians to contact your bank directly to discuss your situation and to get the help that you need. J'ai également parlé aux dirigeants des grandes banques canadiennes et ils se sont engagés à travailler avec les individus et les entreprises pour fournir des solutions flexibles face aux difficultés. Dans un premier temps, ce soutien comprendra un rapport de paiement pouvant aller jusqu'à six mois pour les prêts hypothécaires et la possibilité d'allègement sur d'autres produits de crédit. Nos banques ont toujours soutenu les Canadiens à travers des temps difficiles. J'encourage les Canadiens à communiquer directement avec leurs banques pour discuter de votre situation et obtenir l'aide dont vous avez besoin. Canadians who owe personal income taxes and Canadian businesses who owe cor corporate uh, income tax now only need to pay it before September 1st. This frees up $55 billion in temporary tax relief, and it keeps that money circulating in our economy. We know this is a time when individuals and businesses need to have money at hand. And also, given the extraordinary times, we've extended the tax filing deadline until June 1st. Les Canadiens qui doivent, de l doivent payer de l'impôt sur le revenu des particulières et les entreprises canadiennes qui doivent de l'impôt sur le revenu des sociétés n'auront que le payer avant le, le 1er septembre. Cela libère 55 milliards de dollars d'allègements fiscaux temporaires et permet à cet argent de circuler dans notre économie. Nous savons que c'est un moment où les individus et les entreprises ont besoin d'avoir de l'argent à porter de main. De plus, compte tenu des temps extraordinaires, nous avons prolongé la date limite de production des déclarations de revenus jusqu'au 1er juin. Throughout this situation, I've been in touch with business, with labor, and other leaders across Canada. On Monday, I spoke to all of the CEOs of our major grocery stores. They've told me that their supply chains are still working, working well, and they've committed to me that during this crisis, they will maintain fair prices for their customers. As a reminder to Canadians, when you're out shopping, please make sure that you're leaving goods on the, on the shelves for your neighbors who might be waiting for a check to come before they can buy the things that they need. 
We all need to pull together and to do our part during this time. And I want to say that this work is just beginning. As your Minister of Finance, I will do whatever it takes. In order to follow through on these commitments, we'll be tabling emergency legislation to provide timely support to Canadians, as well as to ensure that we have all the tools to support them and businesses as things continue to evolve during these very uncertain times. It's our collective responsibility to ensure we continue to have the tools to respond quickly as things evolve. These tools will be essential to give Canadians the certainty that their government can rapidly implement measures to protect them and to protect our economy. I'm calling on all parties and the Senate to work with us and to support this legislation. There can be no delay. But I also want to say that I'm confident that all parliamentarians will rise to this occasion. Canadians are counting on us. I want to turn it over now to Governor Polos for a moment before I make some closing remarks. Well, thank you, Minister. Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, Canadians expect their policymakers uh, to do what it takes to support them in this difficult period. The circumstances that we face today require all hands on deck. Each institution is acting within its respective mandate to deliver a powerful confidence-boosting package of measures for consumers, business, and financial markets. For its part, the Bank of Canada has been working hard to ensure that the financial system has sufficient liquidity so that credit continues to be available to businesses and to households. To recap briefly, on Monday, the bank adjusted its liquidity operations to maintain market functioning and credit availability. The bank has broadened eligible collateral for its term repo facility to help maintain funding conditions by providing a backstop to regular private funding. These will complement the reduction in bank capital buffers announced last week by the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions. All of these actions will support lending by banks to consumers and companies. The bank is also providing extra support to the Canada mortgage bond market so that this important funding market continues to function well. The first purchase under this new program took place only yesterday. To help the economy cope with the negative shocks of COVID-19 and the recent sharp drop in oil prices, the bank has reduced its benchmark interest rate by 100 basis points in two steps. The first was on March 4th, second time just this past Friday. Our benchmark interest rate now stands at 0.75%. The bank has also broadened the scope of the Government of Canada bond buyback program, added new term repo operations, and introduced a new banker's acceptance purchase facility that starts next Monday, March the 23rd. In the days to come, the bank will launch its new standing term liquidity facility. This new funding mechanism is focused on individual financial institutions rather than on the market as a whole. It's intended to give an eligible institution that is viable but facing a sudden stress to its liquidity access to central bank liquidity on terms that are known in advance. The Governing Council hopes that institutions facing liquidity issues will make use of this new facility. Canadian banks also conduct parts of their business in U.S. dollars. And on the weekend, the Bank of Canada joined with its counterparts in the UK, Japan, Europe, the US, and Switzerland on a coordinated action to provide liquidity via standing US dollar liquidity swap line arrangements. La Banque du Canada mène des actions concertées pour soutenir l'économie canadienne en cette période de tensions économiques. Nous avons introduit ces nouvelles mesures et nous surveillons comment les marchés s'améliorent. Nous suivons de près l'évolution des marchés et nous sommes prêts à fournir toutes les liquidités dont le système financier a besoin pour qu'il continue à servir les Canadiens. The bank is taking concerted action to support the Canadian economy during this period of economic stress. We've introduced these new measures and we're watching how market performance improves. We're closely monitoring market developments and we stand ready to provide all the liquidity the financial system needs so that it can continue to serve Canadians. Minister, back to you. Well, thank you. Earlier I noted that many of the heroes 
of this situation. The people providing medical care we need, food to eat, working phones and internet, clean spaces. Let's make sure that we give them the support that they need. Journalists are also doing extraordinary work to keep Canadians informed in this rapidly changing situation. I do want to note the work of Governor Polos, my colleagues, especially the Prime Minister, who's reacted to this unprecedented situation with strong leadership, compassion, and a focus on taking concrete actions to help Canadians. There are, though, still many things that we do not know. But to do, we do know one thing, and that is that together we will get through this challenge. Lorsque le moment sera venu, nous annoncerons des investissements à plus long terme pour aider les Canadiens à re reprendre leur vie quotidienne. Mais ce qui importe le plus aujourd'hui, c'est que nous prenions soin les uns des autres, que nous protégions les plus vulnérables et que nous continuons à utiliser tous les outils disponibles pour stabiliser notre économie. Le gouvernement sera là, avec vous, à chaque étape. This is only a first step in our plan. When the time is right, we will announce more long-term investments to assist with recovery and help Canadians get back to their daily lives. But what matters most today is that we look after each other, that we protect those who are most vulnerable, and that we continue to use all of the tools we have to stabilize our economy. The government will be there with you every step along the way. Thank you, and I'm happy to take questions from the journalists here. Hi, everyone. So we will be working with lots of you questions. We'll start by three questions in the room, then we'll go to the phone and the back. Oh, thank you. Um, where's... Your hand up as well. There you go. So I'll just point. Sorry. Let's, go. Let's start here. Uh, Oops. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. You have them. Uh, Kelsey Johnson with Reuters. Um, Governor Pola's uh, first question to you. The federal, the federal Reserve over the weekend cut by 100 basis points to essentially make their rate zero. Why is the Bank of Canada not matching the Federal Reserve's rate cut at this point? Well, as is always the case, uh, we have independent monetary policies on the two sides of the border. Um, we were anxious to see the uh, details of the fiscal uh, policy that was just announced for you. Uh, we'll be taking those actions in fully into account in our estimates of how the economy will fare. Uh, I will say that uh, one of the most desirable features of these actions today are that they are what I would call uh, elastic. I hope you don't mind, Minister, if I coin a phrase, but I, what I think they're designed to do is to expand or not, depending on how large of a, an impact there is on the economy, how many people are affected. And so uh, that's, that's a very desirable feature, and that's something we need to model in. Uh, up, we're updating our forecasts uh, as, as we speak. Uh, bank staff are fully engaged, um, even though they're remote working from home. Our systems are functioning very well, and 1,500 people are on their, uh, logged on our systems remotely. Um, and so uh, uh, April 15th is our next announcement date, uh, so I'd like to have a f the full benefit of the analysis, especially, as I said, incorporating the, uh, the fiscal response into that analysis. And um, so f for now, that's, uh, that's what I'll say about uh, interest rates. Morno, you, you mentioned that EDC is working on specific packages for industries that will be particularly hard hit, like airlines. Can you give a bit more detail as to as to what that package may look like, um, how long it may take to get that package in place? Because as you mentioned, there are significant industries that are in a in a crisis point at this point. Well, let me step to the the broader concern we have to support businesses at this time. Obviously, we are concerned that people stay at their jobs as they as they are able to do that uh, with their employer. And for that reason, we want to make sure that we are supporting companies through this challenging time. The first place we've done that, obviously, has been through uh, providing loan opportunities for uh, small and medium-sized businesses through the Business Credit Availability Program. That's very important. 
What we're doing today is we're giving temporary wage subsidies to businesses so they can keep people on board. And what we know we need to do in the, in the very immediate time frame is to work with uh, businesses that are in impacted sectors. I've already been working uh, with the uh, businesses in the airline sector, spoke to two of the uh, CEOs uh, last evening. Uh, we have a team working with uh, businesses in the oil and gas sector. Uh, we recognize that ensuring that we bridge these businesses through this difficult time is critically important. That's what we're working towards. We'll have um, more work to do with these businesses to listen to their challenges and understand how we can create that support as needed. That's coming, uh, coming shortly as we work with them towards that goal. Thank you. Just for the interest of fairness, let's keep it to one question and one follow-up. Yes. Je ne vois rien pour des travailleurs autonomes qui décideraient de, de respecter la consigne et de rester à la maison, mais qui n'ont pas nécessairement d'enfants, de, qui ne sont pas nécessairement malades. Y a-t-il quelque chose dans le plan et devrait-on pas mettre quelque chose pour s'assurer qu'on respecte la consigne? Nous voulons assurer les gens qui, qui veulent euh, être chez vous, euh, chez eux, euh, qu'ils vont avoir le support, le, le soutien nécessaire. Ça veut dire que notre programme, l'allocation euh, de, de soutien euh, d'urgence va être là pour eux s'il si doit être, euh, il veut être, il doit être chez eux euh, sans, euh, sans, re sans revenu, sans, euh, sans une situation euh, où ils peuvent avoir assez d'argent pour leurs besoins. Ça veut dire qu'on va avoir un programme, euh, l'allocation de soutien d'urgence, qui va être là pour, pour eux si c'est nécessaire d'être chez eux. Et ça va être euh, avec les détails dans les prochaines euh, journées. Et, euh, en des, des rumeurs là, que le taux de, de chômage pourrait atteindre 20 Avez-vous fait des estimés quant à ce que ça, quelle pourrait être la situation au Canada? Nous savons qu'avec euh, avec les défis... Euh, d'aujourd'hui et euh, dans les prochaines journées, euh, on va avoir un euh, une défi pour plusieurs entreprises euh, à travers le pays. Euh, ça veut dire que c'est nécessaire d'avoir une approche, une approche qui euh, protège les gens pour, euh, pour leur situation. Euh, nous ne pouvons pas être euh, aujourd'hui euh, avec un une, une nombre ou une euh, prévision. Euh, la situation est très dynamique. Mais ce qu'on a dit, euh, on, a, on a une approche qui est, comme euh, le gouverneur a dit, une approche qui va être aussi, euh, aussi large que, que nécessaire. Euh, S'il y a un, un défi pour quelqu'un, euh, ils, ils vont avoir le support, le soutien, soutenu nécessaire euh, pour eux et leur famille. Minister, I was curious about your Indigenous communities funding. Uh, can you please explain um, some examples about what that's actually supposed to be used for, what that looks like, and how is it going to be broken down among First Nations, Inuit and Métis? Is that by uh, number of people in each population, or is that by need? Well, first of all, let me say that what we're trying to do in this time, we're trying to make sure that the people that are impacted, that are directly impacted by uh, this virus, Uh, those who want to stay at home uh, because they need to isolate or uh, we've asked to isolate or those who lose their jobs have the support that they need. We also recognize that there are groups of Canadians that are, are particularly vulnerable and uh, people that are in places that are uh, uh, far away from uh, medical care, people who are in places where uh, food security is a challenge are particularly impacted. We recognize that Indigenous and Northern communities are in that category. Uh, we are moving fast in this regard to try and make sure that we've allocated the resources necessary. We recognize that there will be, in, in cases like supporting Indigenous and Northern communities, there'll be, there'll be details that we need to continue to work out. Uh, we need to recognize that, uh, that we don't know all the situations so far and that we need to prepare ourselves for those eventualities. That's what we're doing in the case of, of, uh, of Indigenous people. Over the phone, Juliana. Certainly. You may now press star one to ask your question. The first question is from Bill Terry from the Globe and Mail. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Hi, Minister. You'd mentioned uh, you're working with the oil and gas sector and there might be something on oil from wells coming, but 
What about governments uh, in oil-producing provinces? You've been in talks for several uh, months about fiscal stabilization measures. Uh, we know Newfoundland is in particular uh, fiscal problems. So uh, where are you at in terms of uh, action in response to demands from oil-producing provinces? Well, thank you for the question. We know that there are going to be things emerge through this challenge that, uh, that are unpredictable. Uh, but some things we, we, can, we can see right off. We know that uh, there will be challenges in Alberta because of the significant impact not only of this virus, but also the impact of the uh, oil prices that we're seeing around the world. That will also have impacts on the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, as mentioned. Uh, we're going to work through these challenges individually with provinces as they emerge, uh, recognizing that what, what we want is to come out of this challenge. This is a temporary challenge, a, a, a difficult issue for us, but a temporary challenge, one that we need to come out of strong, and that's uh, going to be our approach. So we will work with provinces as they come to us with their issues in a way that is uh, protecting uh, the citizens of each, each part of our country and ensuring that we have the capacity to move forward once we're through this, this issue. Do you have a follow-up, sir? Yes. Um, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, uh, their reaction is questioning why the support is at 10% uh, when other countries like Denmark are at 75%. And uh, for the governor, if he could uh, weigh in as well, you mentioned the next rate announcement is April 15. What would it take for you to move before that uh, scheduled announcement? Let me just address the approach we've taken uh, today. We want to make very sure that people have access to financial resources in a time of real need. We know that people are concerned about having access to uh, enough money for essentials, for, for medicines, for health care, for, uh, for any form of, of food or lodging. These are critically important, and so we focused our approach on having enough money delivered at the right time so people can actually deal with the, the issues that, that they are facing. We also know that businesses need some support, so we've taken an approach that allows for significant support for businesses right now through a temporary wage subsidy, and also a significant support uh, for businesses as they seek to have credit to make it through a difficult time. Uh, we don't take anything off the table, so we are going to continue to consider the emerging evidence of, of these challenges and uh, respond in a way that meets the goals that we're all trying to achieve, to keep ourselves safe and healthy, to enable us to have our families uh, with the things that they need, and to come out of this uh, strong so that we can uh, revive our economy at the appropriate time. Thank you. Next person. Ah. Thank you. The next question is from Gloria Galloway from Mays News. Your line is open. Uh, hello. My question is for Governor Polas. Um, what additional measures is the bank considering to bolster the economy, and is quantitative easing among them? Well, thank you. Uh, and let me just answer Bill's question, uh, Bill Curry's question, uh, just before I turn to yours. Because uh, they are contextual. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was being fairly careful to not rule out uh, actions at any time. There was nothing scripted about the bank's uh, posture. I only mentioned that between now and April 15th, we'll be doing our usual analysis and producing a monetary policy report. Uh, the bank staff are hard on that. And uh, one of the big changes that we've got to incorporate in that is this major fiscal announcement that we've just seen. Um, it's uh, so, you know, I'm not going to itemize what, what could cause us to, uh, to move earlier or not move earlier uh, at this stage. What I think, uh, and coming, blending that with the next question, um, we've, we've made a lot of uh, moves in just a few days, uh, as I itemized. And just to give you an illustration, I mean, I, I know it sounds quite theoretical to people. Oh, we have a different repo program or different collateral. Uh, just to illustrate what that might mean, uh, just yesterday, uh, the bank did about just under $35 billion of unusual or, or uh, say quite exceptional transactions, um, and that's across a wide range of programs, some of which we had never done before. 
So I'm very proud of the trading room folks that are getting these things done at a time, especially when we've split our operations into three different locations for health uh, safety reasons. Um, and everything's functioning terrifically. I'm, I'm knocking on wood there. But for example, we did uh, our first purchase in the secondary market of Canada mortgage bonds yesterday. Spreads on Canada mortgage bonds have come down from, you know, in the almost 70 basis points to around 50 basis points. These are on 10 years. That's a really significant move in the markets and it's an indicator that that, that action is helping to ease tensions out there. And as I said, this is all aimed at keeping credit channels open so that, uh, you know, we are out, out there, businesses and, and households have lines of credit with banks. And what we want to make sure is that the system functions well so the banks are still in a position to continue to offer that credit to people when they actually need it, uh, which is in a, in a situation like this. So uh, that back plumbing sort of uh, action that we're taking uh, is very important, and uh, some of these things are just getting underway. So I think it's important for us to take some time here to watch those things unfold and see how the market functions. What other tools do we have? Well, they're the same ones that we've laid out in the past under our extraordinary uh, measures. They are all still in the toolkit. But I think the main thing is that uh, it's, most of these things are scale, that is, are scalable. So we've sort of started out with a certain number of, as I said, for example, $35 billion yesterday. That's a lot for one day worth of transactions. But we will scale that as needed. Whatever the system needs, that's, that's, this is what we will provide. And uh, we'll continue to evolve perhaps uh, elements of the programs to make them more tailored if need be. But for now, we've got a lot in place, and we want to see how it functions. It seems to be functioning well uh, so far. Follow-up? Uh, I, I take it that means you're not ruling out quantitative easing. I would certainly not rule out quantitative easing. Of course not. Um, and uh, that that is just something that's a, a standard part of the central bank toolkit. Um, I would say, though, that the things that we are doing uh, right now, that is actively uh, operating in uh, various bond uh, markets, and uh, we're just about to start uh, next week, um, our, our bank, banker's acceptance uh, uh, program. Well, those, those things may appear to you as a sort of quantity of easing, but they are, they are not. They are, they are just intended to help markets uh, discover prices more readily when the bond market is dysfunctional. Uh, people can't, uh, they get big bid ask spreads and the market kind of freezes up. So by doing switches and buybacks, the bank can show itself and, and show guidance into an equilibrium so we get uh, more rapid uh, turnover in the market. So all those things are going hand in hand to make sure the, I feel like the plumbing is working well. Uh, and that means that the rest of the delivery system that's going on uh, can do its job. The one before going back to the room. The next question is from Chris Varko from the Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Hi, Minister Morneau. I just want to know what kind of assistance are you looking at for the airlines and for the oil and gas sector? Would this be part of the $10 billion liquidity measures that were announced last week, or would they provide a different kind of assistance? Are you looking at things like loan guarantees, direct investments? Thank you. We recognize that through the course of this, uh, this uh, virus, we are going to face uh, different challenges from different sectors, different challenges from different sizes of business. Uh, we are not ruling out any conclusion in any situation. We're going to actively work with uh, organizations in the oil and gas sector, in the airline uh, sector, in order to come up with approaches that enable them to bridge through a challenging time. That's critical. <clears throat> We're not far enough along in those discussions to uh, identify specific measures that we will take, but we do recognize the urgency of those discussions and are proceeding with that in mind. Your follow-up? No. Okay, in that case, we'll be going back to the room. Uh, Monsieur Blouin, Radio-Canada. Um, 
là-dedans de spécifique pour les aînés, euh, pour les personnes de plus de 70 ans. Il aurait pu y avoir, par exemple, bonification des prestations de la sécurité de la vieillesse rapidement. Euh, pourquoi ce n'est pas dans vos mesures? Est-ce que vous ne pensez pas que les, les aînés, en ce moment, c'est une clientèle particulièrement vulnérable qui aurait peut-être besoin d'aide? Merci. Euh, nous savons qu'il qu y a des défis pour, euh, pour les Canadiens et les Canadiens partout. Uh, bien sûr, uh, le défi est plus important pour les gens qui sont dans une position où ils ont moins de revenus à cause de la COVID-19. Uh, nous, nous allons uh, assurer, nous voulons assurer les aînés que notre système, notre approche continue. Donc, ils, ils vont avoir leurs revenus gardés avec, avec notre approche. Mais nous savons en même temps qu'il y a des, des défis particuliers. Ça veut dire qu'avec un changement dans les, dans les prix, dans les marchés, euh, il y a un défi pour quelques-unes entre, euh, entre les aînés. Et c'est pour ça que nous avons euh, introduit une approche qui va aider les gens qui, 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 vous, qui veulent avoir euh, l'assurance qu'ils... Uh, qu'ils peuvent continuer avec, uh, avec leur approche uh, dans l'avenir. Donc ça, c'est très important, mais bien sûr, nous allons continuer de, de regarder la situation. Uh, S'il y a quelque chose de spécifique qui, qui est nécessaire, on va, on va considérer. Hier, a évoqué un assouplissement des règles pour avoir une prestation d'assurance-emploi, par exemple, réduire le nombre d'heures. Euh, il y a des gens aussi qui ont demandé une bonification des prestations d'assurance-emploi. Pourquoi vous choisissez de ne pas aller là pour l'instant? Le, le chose le plus important, euh, la chose immédiate, ça veut dire que c'est très nécessaire de considérer les gens qui ne sont pas dans notre système d'assurance d'emploi, les gens qui n'ont qui ont rien s'ils ont un problème. C'est pour ça que nous avons con considéré comment nous pouvons assurer le, le 5,7 millions de, de travailleurs entre notre 19 millions de travailleurs qu'ils qu vont avoir quelque chose. Ça, c'est très important. Mais en plus, on a fait des choses qui, qui vont aider euh, une, une, une partie très importante des Canadiens et Canadiennes. Le, le, notre approche pour un crédit avec le, euh, le GST est très importante. Ça va aider euh, 15,5 millions de, de Canadiens. Uh, en plus, l'allocation canadienne pour enfants, le, le bonification est très important. Ça va aider 3,4 millions de familles partout au Canada. Donc, on a, on a des mesures spécifiques. On a des mesures pour, uh, pour un une, une nombre très important de Canadiens. Et uh, ensemble, il y a une, une, une approche qui est très importante pour les gens dans une uh, situation où ils peuvent avoir moins de revenus à, à cause de notre... À notre situation. For Canadians to get money in their pockets. We've worked hard uh, to make sure that the approaches that we're taking will enable us to move forward uh, as rapidly as possible. This has been a, a, a key area of focus. Certainly, the Prime Minister has been very engaged in this discussion with me. Uh, we've looked at both the systems that we currently have in government like the employment insurance system, and the systems that we have that can enable us to get money out quickly. It's, it's why we've come to the measures that we've come to, because they enable us to get money out rapidly. So we will be working through the Canada Revenue Agency primarily for the GST uh, credit. That will enable us to get that out uh, fairly rapidly, we believe in April. Uh, for the uh, approach, the emergency uh, benefits that we've talked about, those benefits will be able to be out within within a, a couple to three weeks, very rapidly. We're, we're putting up an automatic system so people can go online to the CRA to actually apply with a very, very modest approach to showing that they have the appropriate situation. And uh, that, we think, will enable people to get money in their, in their family finances uh, very rapidly. And are you concerned about the optics of closing the U.S.-Canadian border to non-essential travel, that it may lead to consumers, you know, panic shopping or, uh, you know, hoarding groceries more uh, or other supplies. How do you combat that? And as well, um, as well, can the cross-border supply chain, is it resilient enough to maintain that kind of a shock for an extended period of time? We've, we've been working very hard with the U.S. administration in recent days to make sure we come up with an approach that ensures that we can continue to have the, the goods and the, the things that we need 
the essential medicines, the, the food come back and forth across our border, that our broader supply chains can, can continue. Because we want that to uh, be able to maintain our economy now and to allow us to, to get back to where we, we want to get back to once we're past this crisis. Uh, I think what we've come to is, is, a, is a very good conclusion that we will enable non-essential non uh, workers and travelers. They, those people will not be able to cross the border, but essential workers, people that might be working in Windsor uh, from Detroit or people working in Detroit that are from Windsor, they will be able to go back and forth if they're in the healthcare sector. We'll be able to ensure that, that goods and services can, can come, on, come back and forth because our economies will, uh, will need that, uh, that economic travel. But other travel won't be moving back and forth. That, uh, that was an, um, an important discussion between uh, the Prime Minister and the President. Uh, we're confident that that will give Canadians confidence that we'll continue to have what we need. And uh, we will be uh, continuing to work together in a, in a cooperative way as we try uh, our best to, to deal with everything as, a, as it comes up. And that's, that's the approach we've taken and will continue to take. Hi, Minister Morneau. Uh, Molly Thomas from CTV National News. Um, you said your focus is for Canadians to keep food in the fridge and a roof over their heads. So we know that the banks are deferring mortgage payments. I mean, but what about people that don't own a home? What about people um, that are struggling to pay rent in this time? What are you doing for them? Well, that's particularly important. We, we know that there's, there's many different situations for, uh, for as many different Canadians as, as exist. And we are trying to ensure that we, we deal with the most urgent and important uh, right up front. And that's why we've, those, those 5.7 million people who aren't in the employment insurance system, those, uh, those people are very important for us to deal with right up. So if they're sick or if they're quarantined or if they, uh, they are laid off or, or can't work and therefore aren't getting paid, they will have access to funds. The GST low income credit, which will be providing a significant amount of support for, for lower income Canadians, it's a, a benefit that provides everyone with a family income up to about $56,000 with, with support, that will help as well. So. Uh, we are doing our best to make sure that we get the, the funds to the people who, who need it most on an urgent basis, and uh, we believe that's the, that's the right way to deal with this challenge. And we'll continue to think about other methods to get money to people, but we believe these are the fastest way to get the appropriate amount of funds to the people who are most in need. Financial bind was 2008, obviously. Um, are we looking at a worse financial quarter to come? Uh, then after that, and maybe Governor Polaz can also weigh in on that. I, I think it's important that we, we tell Canadians what we know and what we don't know. We, we, we can't know the, the full impact or the duration of the challenge we're facing. We do know that we have uh, one of the strongest, if not the strongest, healthcare system in the world to deal with this crisis. We do know that we actually have perhaps the, the best banking system in the world to make sure that businesses can still get credit. We have a very strong fiscal position that we're willing to use. So we know that we've got the tools to deal with this. We also know that we have a, a strong and, and well-educated workforce to come out of this when the time comes. And we'll support people along the way to get there. Uh, as we know more, we will be telling Canadians uh, exactly what we know, and we will be supporting them with measures that are appropriate to the challenges that we come up against. That's what we're trying to do today, and we'll continue with that approach. So, um, sorry. Um, you know, I think uh, the minister said, well, we honestly don't know what's, what's coming our way. Uh, fact is, back then, we didn't know what was coming our way either. Um, but I would say that uh, one thing you mentioned, which is a, a worth emphasizing, that is we actually do have the best banking system in the world. And it is indeed vastly strengthened compared to uh, 12 years ago uh, because of uh, new global standards. And, uh, and I think also lessons that were learned uh, during that period. And those lessons were learned not just by the lenders, but they were learned by the policymakers. So, uh, personally, I have great comfort from the seasoned people who I've got around me uh, who uh, were living through that. At the time, I was making loans at EDC. Uh, but, uh, but, for example, Carolyn Wilkins was in the trench developing new uh, capital 
arrangements, uh, new collateral arrangements, new lines to uh, to uh, help the situation under Governor Carney. And there she is today doing exactly the same thing behind the scenes. Uh, that sort of thing gives gives me a lot of confidence that, in fact, um, we are we are in a better position today in the financial system, uh, and we're ahead we're ahead in terms of the deployment of those tools compared to uh, back back in two thousand and eight. Uh, again, I put that up against we don't actually know what's what's coming our way, of course. Uh, but I think we've got the ability to be nimble and, and adaptable to it. And uh, this this uh, fiscal package is uh, going to make a really big difference to uh, to the way you, you envision how that would play out. So I think uh, the other thing we, we want to prepare for the other side, we know that this is a temporary thing. We don't know how long or how big, but it's it's temporary. And uh, I know we're, we're, we enter this at a time when the economy was in the best place it had been for a really long time, with unemployment at a historic lows and inflation on target and so on. Those are, those are in, a, in a strong fiscal position. So all those things uh, make a really big difference to how we will recover afterwards. So I think we can certainly uh, look forward to a robust recovery when, when the trouble is behind us. So we'll go back to the phone, but in the interest of time, we'll only take two questions on the phone and then two questions in the audience. Juliana? So to me, the next question is from Kim McHale from the Wall Street Journal. Your line is open. Hi, thanks. This question is for Governor Polaz. Uh, Governor, I'm wondering if you could describe uh, how Governing Council is communicating at this stage, if things have changed uh, in terms of whether you're meeting in person, your communications have moved to a different format, and, um, and how often you're meeting, and when the last meeting was. Okay, well, we're we're in pretty constant touch. Uh, we we met yesterday. Um, we are uh, we met though mostly virtually. Uh, for for certain, uh, Senior Deputy Governor Wilkins and I are maintaining our distance. Uh, should either one of us become ill, that we don't uh, affect the other. Uh, one of our deputy governors uh, went home and stayed home uh, um, last week, and a second one who lives in Vancouver is staying home. So we're we're completely. There's only at most a couple of deputy governors in the building uh, at any one time, and uh, the building's mostly empty except for the operational staff I mentioned uh, before. Uh, anyway, so we're meeting uh, more or less continuously. It was like the uh, both on the virt on virtual. Uh, the, uh, the Skyping is working extraordinarily well. My compliments to Bell Canada. I had a couple, I was on the phone all day yesterday, and only once did I fail to get a call through. Um, went to my landline and it worked right away. But, uh, and so the system must be taking a terrific uh, amount of traffic uh, in this situation. Um, and so all that to say, we're in constant touch. And we're also in uh, very frequent touch with our G7 colleagues. And uh, we're meeting uh, twice a week uh, with the, the, the big six uh, CEOs of the, uh, the large banks um, to, to get a feel for that. And, of course, our market intelligence people are in constant contact uh, with the street. And, uh, and our, of course, our operational people are in the market uh, every minute. And so uh, we're getting a constant play-by-play -play globally and domestically. Um, it's, uh, I'd say in that, in that sense, operationally, it's working extraordinarily well. Uh, so, uh, let's, um, uh, uh, let's just look forward, as I said before, to how all these things we're doing that are different from before, how they play out. Um, uh, fundamentally it's about the, the, our financial system having access to funding and being able to continue to, uh, get things working out through the system. People need it, they get it. Thank you. Thanks. And, and can I ask, during your discussions, the discussions Governing Council held yesterday, uh, did you discuss the possibility of a rate cut today? Uh, I don't want to front run. What our, I mean, our discussions at this stage are, it's like a continuous dialogue. It's, it's not like we're, um, you know, saying, well, let's talk about this on Friday or, or on Monday or that sort of thing. We're just talking continuously. 
Um, we're uh, developing these new uh, tools. We're commenting to one another. What have we forgotten? What haven't we done? Uh, so that uh, there's there, right now, um, you know, we'll just be we'll be in touch all the time, and we will be able to say conditions have changed enough that we perhaps should have a conversation about this. So I won't need to organize a formal meeting. Everybody's available. For one thing, travels where nobody's traveling anywhere, so it is actually more available than usual. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Next question. The next question is from Catherine Lévesque de La Presse Canadienne. Votre ligne est ouverte. Oui, bonjour. Euh, J'avais une question pour Monsieur Morneau. Euh, si on regarde le, le détail, par exemple, de l'allocation de soins d'urgence, les gens doivent prouver à chaque deux semaines qu'ils sont encore éligibles. Je me demandais donc pourquoi ne pas, pas alléger ou est-ce que vous considérez alléger peut-être ces, euh, ces options-là pour, pour les gens qui peut-être pour avoir de la misère à contacter euh, l'ARC et je me demandais pourquoi ne pas avoir distribué un chèque d'urgence peut-être pour les gens qui doivent effectuer des paiements tout de suite. Merci beaucoup. Euh, nous voulons avoir une approche qui, euh, qui fonctionne, qui fonctionne euh, très, très vite. Euh, nous pensons que nous avons trouvé une, une approche qui, euh, qui est bonne. Ça veut dire qu'on va avoir une attestation, une attestation très courte pour assurer que le, le personne, euh, l'individu est, euh, est dans une situation où c'est nécessaire d'avoir d'argent. Et avec ça, on va avoir une, une approche automatique. Ça veut dire qu'avec euh, l'Agence de revenus du Canada, on a la possibilité de, de, de donner l'argent euh, immédiatement. Donc, à, à notre avis, ça, c'est une, une approche qui, qui va fonctionner. Si nous avons des, euh, des défis, Uh, C'est la première fois que nous avons uh, utilisé une, une approche comme ça. On va le corriger aussitôt que possible. Donc, uh, on va être là pour, uh, pour les Canadiens et les Canadiennes. On va être là aussitôt que possible avec, uh, avec le, le soutenu qui est nécessaire. Merci beaucoup. Et mon autre question, c'est, ben, en fait, la, la plupart des mesures qui ont été annoncées aujourd'hui en soutien direct, euh, en fait, devront être adoptées par le Parlement, devront avoir la sanction royale. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous dites aux partis d'opposition euh, pour qu'ils adoptent les mesures le plus rapidement possible? Quel est votre message pour eux? Je voudrais dire que les autres partis ont euh, euh, travaillé avec, euh, avec nous en ce moment, euh, et ça, c'est très important. Uh, je suis encouragé avec, uh, avec uh, leur approche. Uh, nous avons eu uh, beaucoup de recommandations. Nous avons considéré uh, leurs recommandations. À mon avis, uh, nous savons uh, ensemble que c'est nécessaire d'avoir une, uh, une uh, approche qui va être en place aussitôt que possible. Et uh, je suis, uh, je suis uh, sur le... À mon avis, on va être là euh, dans l'avenir très proche. Thank you. And uh, we are coming back to the room, sir. Uh, Governor, can I ask you, I'm just looking for a figure. Uh, on purchase of bankers' acceptance notes, municipal and corporate bonds, what's the ceiling? Uh, we, have not, uh, we have not laid out our parameters around that yet, uh, but it'll be judged according to need, okay? Well, what our objective will be market functioning. Uh, and so if, if the market needs uh, only a small amount of activity from us to function well, then it'll be a small amount. But uh, it will start off with, you know, I think pretty large numbers, and uh, it's more a question of what take up there is. It's like a, it's like a reverse auction. So you, you put out, you say, well, we're willing to take up to this much and see what the response is. So it's more like, what does the market require in order to uh, get through its uh, get through its business week? Um, so that's to begin next week. And um, and you know, I mean, it's, it, I hesitate to use the the you know extreme words around this, but just say like all of these things we've done around uh, around uh, repos and other forms of lending or involvement in the actual secondary markets, um, we, we can scale those up as much as needed, okay? So there's, there's, uh, there's all kinds of capacity to, to make them as big 
uh, as as seems to be needed at the time. So we don't have to worry about like people are asking, can, is there more you can do? Well, yeah, you can you can do everything much bigger one week and not as big the next. It just depends on what the market requires. And Minister, you've uh, been told by CFIB that businesses uh, will be failing, but the carbon tax goes up at the start of the fiscal year. Uh, you've been told by CFIB that people will lose their jobs, but MPs will be getting a cost of living increase on April 1st. Carbon tax, cost of living increase, will you defer those or repeal them on April 1st to set an example? I think um, it's important to uh, to note that we've you know we've been working together with um, with the other parties. Uh, we I've asked uh, the president of the Canadian Labour Congress and the president of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce are both here with us today. We've been working together with labour and with business to work on an approach that's going to deliver the support that Canadians need right now. And by that I mean the support that people need to deal with this immediate challenge. So we've uh, had uh, recommendations from both the Canadian Labour Congress and the Canadian Chamber of Commer Congress, uh, Canadian Chamber, on, on approaches we can take to deal with both how we support people and how we support businesses through a very challenging time. Uh, we've embraced the approaches that they've they've recommended recommended because we've seen them as being very sensible uh, approaches, things that we can implement rapidly. We've also um, taken and embraced the approaches proposed by the other parties. I think there's been a, a good level of collaboration and understanding that we need to deal with the, the challenges in the, in the immediate term that are, that are right here in front of us, and we need to ensure that we get to the challenges that will be the next set of challenges when those uh, present themselves. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with where we've gotten to, but I uh, will have to acknowledge that we will... Uh, remain open to considering what the next steps should be based on uh, how the situation evolves. Uh, our approach, as the governor mentioned, is elastic. If we find that we have uh, more people with challenges, we are, we are uh, taking the measures that mean that people can have access to money irrespective of, of how long that goes because we, we're going to have to reconsider the information as it comes out. Um, and that's, that's going to be quite important for dealing with this challenge. Uh, so, um, I want Canadians to know that we will continue to support them, that, uh, that in a challenging time, the government will be there for them. Thank you. And for our last question, Madame Lamarche TVA. Bonjour. D'abord, pour vous, vous dites qu'il reste beaucoup de travail législatif à faire avant de pouvoir mettre les, alloca les allocations, les bonifications en place. Vous dites trois semaines pour l'allocation de soins d'urgence. Vous êtes vraiment confiant de réussir à faire ça en trois semaines. Et pour les autres, Ça va prendre combien de temps? Nous, euh, nous avons déjà commencé notre approche euh, au niveau d'administration. Ça veut dire qu'on euh, a travaillé pendant les dernières semaines pour assurer que nous avons la facilité, la capacité de, de payer l'argent aux gens. Ça, c'est très important. On doit avoir la législation. Ça veut dire que c'est nécessaire de, de travailler avec les autres parties. Euh, À mon avis, on, on va avoir la possibilité d'être dans une bonne position dans les prochaines journées. Euh, c'est immédiat, c'est urgent. Euh, donc, euh, on, a de, on a une approche, on, on a la possibilité de, de faire quelque chose de très important et euh, on, va, on va être très transparent avec les Canadiens, les Canadiennes pour assurer euh, chaque journée où nous sommes. Euh, de cette façon, ils peuvent avoir la confiance nécessaire uh, pour eux et leur famille, uh, qu'ils vont avoir assez d'argent pour les, les choses essentielles. Uh, ça va continuer d'être notre approche. Si, si ça, ça peut en avance de trois semaines, on, on va le faire en avance. Si c'est nécessaire de prendre trois semaines, uh, c'est ça. Mais, mais nous travaillons uh, chaque journée pour avoir la, la façon d'administrer uh, ce qu'on a expliqué aujourd'hui une évaluation des coûts là, pour les changements à la frontière avec les États-Unis. Euh, Êtes-vous capable de nous dire, là, même si la marchandise continue de circuler, il y aura des complications? Combien ça va coûter, ça, aux Canadiens, tous ces changements à la frontière américaine? C'est sûr que ça va changer euh, nos échanges. 
Notre approche avec, euh, avec la frontière américaine est, euh, est d'avoir une, une, euh, une, euh, une approche qui va garder notre système de santé, qui va garder la santé des Canadiens. Et je crois qu'on a trouvé une, une, une bonne approche, euh, une approche où le, le, on, on peut continuer avec, euh, avec les choses essentielles, euh, mais on va, on va dire aux, aux Canadiens, aux Américains, qu'ils doivent rester chez eux si, si ce n'est pas essentiel. Uh, pour notre économie, avec, avec le, le, notre approche, nous pensons qu'on on va continuer d'avoir uh, un niveau de commerce entre les deux pays. Uh, on ne peut pas être certain en ce moment exactement uh, l'avenir parce qu'on a les changements chaque journée. Mais uh, c'est clair qu'on a un une, une accord avec les Américains qui va assurer que nous pouvons continuer d'avoir un commerce, un niveau de commerce euh, qui est très important pour notre économie. We, uh, we believe that what we've come up with with the Americans is, is the appropriate approach. We've, we've said that we don't want to have uh, non-essential travel back and forth. So uh, consistent with both countries, we've, we've asked people to stay at home if they, if they can stay at home. Uh, if they're not essential workers. That said, we'll allow essential workers uh, to go back and forth. We'll allow for commerce to continue because we know that getting uh, medicine, getting food back and forth across the border is critically important for both countries. And so we've, we've taken a, a practical approach that will protect us and ensure that we, we continue to be able to um, have a, a functioning economy during this challenging time. So with that, I, I'd like to, to thank all of you and, and just to say that what we've tried to do today is to ensure that Canadians have, have confidence, that Canadians have confidence that we are going to uh, protect them and their families, uh, not only their health, but their ability to afford the things that they need at the time they need it. This is a first phase. It's a, it's a very significant phase of, of helping people directly, of helping businesses to bridge a difficult time. But there will be more work to do as we have uh, more information. I've been particularly pleased with the uh, cooperation of the, of the other parties. Um, it, is, uh, it is clear that we all see the importance of working together to, to support Canadians. And I'm, I'm confident that we'll continue to be able to work together in that regard. I've been particularly pleased to see the Canadian Labour Congress and the, the uh, Canadian Chambers of Commerce to work together to come up with ideas that, uh, that are supporting Canadians, supporting Canadian businesses so they can support uh, people. Uh, this is the sort of thing that we have uh, in Canada that, is, that, is so, uh, that we're so fortunate to have. Uh, we will continue to, to take care of Canadians. We ask that people take care of themselves and uh, the government will be there to support them uh, as we move forward in these challenging times. So, merci beaucoup uh, pour être ici aujourd'hui. Thank you, and we'll look forward to continuing to keep you up to date as the situation evolves. Thank you, Governor. All right, Peter Van Dusen watching along with you, Finance Minister Bill Morneau and the Governor of the Bank of Canada, Stephen Paul.